Academy's P47 in 148 scale. What do you get for your money? Find out right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel, and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is box opening day on the kit of the week, and this week the kit is the P47D Thunderbolt in 148 scale from Academy. It's the one in the colours of Gabby Gabreski. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these, just want to know what's inside the box, this is very much the video for you. If you want to know a bit more about the history of the P47 and what kits of the P47 are available, or indeed, if you want to see how to put it together, keep an eye out on this channel because those videos are coming up very soon. If you really want to know when they come up, why not? Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my new videos as they pop up. And of course, anything at all you like on my channel, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the button below because every like counts. And if you want to offer a bit more concrete support to the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks, by becoming a channel member, or through any of my online partner programs, or indeed, like my mate Harry Grant, by sending me a kit to build. Harry, thank you very much for this, my friend. Okay, enough of all of that. Let's get a look now at what you get inside this box of the P47D Thunderbolt in 148 from Academy. So here we have the box of the P47D Thunderbolt in the colours of the aircraft flown by Gabby Gabreski in World War II. Um, the front is um, box art, looks like it's from about 1970-ish. Um, obviously painted rather than the modern digital art, but still, you know, very nice. Um, on the side here are some photos of finished models done by the Academy guys, I guess. Um, an artwork of the included figure, not an actual painted figure. Um, let's see what we get inside. It possibly won't surprise you when I say the first thing you're confronted with are some packets of parts. Now there are three cellophane packs here containing five frames plus the transparent frame and something else as well. I'll go through all these parts in a little bit. Next in here is the decal sheet. It's quite large because the um, wing invasion stripe decals are included as well as the fuselage ones. I'm going to use the decals for fuselage, but I'm going to paint the wings for a whole variety of reasons, not least of which is that's a whole lot of space there to try and get to sit flat and to sit within rivet lines and panel lines and so on. It's a lot easier to paint the wings. The fuselage ones, they're quite complex. Um, for a start, they've outlined them, outlined them in black and then they sprayed between them in black. So anyway, we'll see about that later on. Most important thing is the wing markings are going to be painted. There is a very small decal sheet here, which we'll go into, which are uh, rub-on decals as well. But we'll have a closer look at all that in a moment, as usual. Then there is uh, the instruction sheet here. Um, first page is all the colour callouts, so you can go through, check out the colours you've got. Um, they include Humbrol, Testers, uh, Mr Hobby and Life Colour. I guess it's not that difficult to go between these and other popular brands, Tamiya and... Vallejo, uh, AK, whatever. It should be fairly straightforward to go between them. Instructions are in here, and we'll have a look at those in a bit more detail. There's a specific instruction sheet about um, decal placement, particularly with the rub-on decals. There's a couple of uh, bits and pieces here, a couple of, like, this one on 
guideline for beginners and some warnings in there. And on the base, there's some adverts for other aircraft in the Academy range. Starting with the uh, looking at the parts now, and I'll do them in alphabetical order, although it's incredibly illogical the way they've done it. Uh, the first is frame C. I don't know where A and B are, but there we go. So this gives us um, some tailplane, uh, op, yep, tailplanes, um, gun interiors for the wings, engine parts, main gear legs, cockpit parts, um, engine cowling, and so on. Next is frame D. We have two copies of that. Um, they are essentially mainly underwing stores and fuel tanks, things like that. Oh, and option wheels with these are with uh, flat spots on them. Frame F is next. As you can see, it mainly contains the two fuselage halves, um, a large under fuselage fuel tank, more wheels, um, covers for the gun bays on the wings, the huge propeller and the undercarriage doors. And finally, frame G, which are the wings, top and bottom of the wings. The transparent frame is given as frame E for echo and has the windshield and canopy, the bubble top canopy, some very small transparent parts, I'm guessing for lights and ID lights, the wing tip lights, and I suspect this is a uh, part of the gun sight there. Although it doesn't appear to have, yeah, it should be part one and then those are part two. We'll find out in a bit. Okay, if we have a look at some of the plastic itself now and the fine molding of the parts, they look pretty good. Um, yeah, so kind of interesting rivet lines. The plastic appears to have flowed reasonably well through the mold. There's no massive flow lines anywhere. The panel lines are reasonably deep. They're not hugely deep. They're, you know, not as deep as you'll probably find on an FX kit, but still there. Um, should be reasonably accessible to a fairly average modeler like myself. Um, Detailing, detailing around the uh, propeller there is quite nice. Detailing on the inside of the undercarriage bay doors is, is quite pleasant as well. It's quite good. The plastic feels quite solid, quite tough, quite um, sort of on the more brittle side of the range of soft to hard plastics. They're quite hard, um, which means it might well be easy enough to clean up some of these uh, injection points here because they all go straight onto the kit there's no um, where are we yeah you can see they go straight onto the kit there's no like undercut molding on here but that looks okay it looks all right the instrument panel is actually pretty well modeled in relief um, I think that's the best option here is going to be to uh, do that in black and then dry brush and then do some spot colors around it because that will look just as good at this scale and from the distance I'm going to be viewing it at, it would look just as good as getting a, a proper um, aftermarket uh, instrument panel. The side panels look pretty good, fuse boxes, um, map cases and whatever, oxygen line. And here the trim tabs and the throttle quadrant. Oh, throttle. Yeah, it was a throttle in those days. These days it's a thrust lever. Then it was a throttle. I know these might be radio sets or something like that. Radio controls. They all look incredibly sharp. I, I will say I do, do like this. This molding here, because they use this, this really quite harsh plastic, they can do some really, really tight molding. And that looks like a wheel, even though it's actually um, sort of sunk, sunk in. You know, the, the side of it goes all the way up. But in the cockpit, with a bit of highlighting, that will look like a, a wheel part that's been adding on. So that's quite cool. Uh, the gun feeds and breeches here look nice enough. Reasonable. I would have liked those a bit deeper to be able to pick those out of the shell casings, but that's just me. Engine looks quite nice as well. Reasonably detailed. Um, 
probably not going to see a lot of the engine, but even though it is a radial and it's a big hole in the front. Uh, the underwing pylons have got a lot of detail on them as well, which is nice. They're often an overlooked part of the aircraft. There's not so much flash on this. I mean, around the gun ports, the ed edges of these gun port parts here, there's a little bit of flash, tiny bits here and there, but generally speaking, very, very little. Again, the wing parts, you know, they look nicely molded. The plastic's quite firm. The panel lines are definitely there, but not too deep. You can see a lot of this detail is going to be where the um, the invasion lines would have gone. And I, I don't, especially over the, the uh, covers for the guns there, I didn't want to be doing all of that. Um, likewise, the underside, getting all these doors and the decals and all that door, I, it's going to be so much easier to paint them. Pity these aren't drilled out. I might, may or may not, I don't know if I'll feel, feel up to it. Maybe I'll just put some really dark paint into there to make them look like they are ejection chutes. I mean, they wouldn't be completely full of holes, would they? Uh, these are where those tiny ID lights go in the end of the wing here. I guess they're going to be coloured. There's another ID light here. The holes look well moulded, well well positioned. On the inside, you can see that the ejection pin lines have been scoured off by the tooling. So there has been some attempt to clean it up, even though it's nowhere near the other side. So that's kind of nice. And there's some, it does look like there's been some post moulding clean up here. Wouldn't swear to it. But um, if this look, it looks a bit like scratched and grey along there, and that's it's just been sat in the in the uh, bags for all this time. I don't know what that is. But anyway, all of the um, ejector pin posts, you can see if I angle it, uh, have had some attention to to make sure the posts aren't poking out into the structure anyway, which is a good sign. The tire treads are reasonably sharp and reasonably deep, although yeah, they have the, the injector does inject does go into the end of the tire. So that's going to mean a little bit of the top is going to have to be either it's going to be cleaned off and, and recut or I don't think I'll be bothered doing that. One thing I will say is that these bombs, uh, the fins on the bombs you can see how they uh, the fin stiffener plates here are really crisply moulded to a point so that they match up on that, um, where are we? There we go. On that inside side, you can see there's a little notch there for these um, stiffener plates to fit into. So that's, that's a, a sign that they actually care about accurately moulding stuff. And the plastic, the clear plastic parts are very clean. Uh, there's no obvious stress markings or flow markings in here. They're, they're pretty good. There's some sort of hint of something on this contour, but nothing major, nothing unpleasant. Um, there's some rivet details in the bottom there, which is good. Yeah, they look good enough. The kit does come with this uh, resin moulded figure of Gabby Gabreski. It looks really sharply moulded, reasonably well designed. I mean, the, the neck is slightly odd, to be honest, and it just sticks out just a bit too much. Um, tiny, tiny little bits of flash in there, but really nothing that can't be cleaned up. And this could make an entertaining figure to produce. Now, um, there is a separate oxygen mask because uh, it fits on the side up here somewhere. Um, presumably it just didn't work as a whole piece. So separate oxygen mask that gets glued on and then can paint the whole thing. Uh, generally speaking, it's a very nice looking figure, 148 figure. So we'll have fun painting that. Decal sheet here. Yeah. Decals are printed by Cartograph. If you can hear a scraping noise in the background, it's one of the cats trying to get into my studio. Um, as I said before, most of the uh, 
this half is taken up by these huge invasion markings. I'm not going to use, I'm going to paint those on. Um, I'm not going to use the uh, propeller top decals either. I'll be doing those myself, but everything else is going on. Um, now, normally, for reasons of um, experience of monetization issues other people have had, I wouldn't be having any nasty German symbols on the plane. But because these are symbols showing how many kills he scored, I'm putting them on. Now, whether you can see them in the video or not is another matter. But on my plane, the play kit I'm making, these are going on there. They come in two parts. So they don't break any laws in Europe over printing of certain symbols. But I will definitely be using it. There are two parts. There's one part here. And then this whole thing here is another part. And just the two go together. Um, but other than that, everything looks very nice and very sharp and very clean because they're cartograph. So as you can see, very, very sharp, very crisp, very clean. Uh, this is a 0.5 millimeter um, pencil. So you can see these, these are under half a millimeter tall and they're lovely and sharp. Absolutely brilliant. As usual, from cartograph, they do make really nice decals. I have to say decals, decals, whatever you call them. Okay, transfers. I'm going to start calling them transfers, I think. Now, they're having included this sheet of rub down decals um, just for the aircraft ID tags and the registration and some other little bits and pieces. I, I'm guessing maybe because they're yellow and they can get a better quality of yellow on this than they can on regular transfers but I, I can't see that myself i can't see it's going to be any much better but anyway we'll give them a go um slightly more trepidation about using these than almost anything else in the kit to be perfectly honest because i've never ever used these before but we'll see how we go with them the instruction sheet in mono as i said before in black and white um first thing we notice here are all the color call outs um uh, with Aqueous Mr. Hobby with, sorry, Aqueous Hobby Color, Mr. Hobby Life Color, Humbro and Testor or Model Master, both enamels and acrylics. Kind of gives you a, a hint about when these were made, uh, these kits were made by, by the sort of the brands that were perceived as being quite large. These days, you no, know, they would be Vallejo, they might be AK, they may well also have things like, well, Tamiya, obviously. Um, so uh, we need to look. There's, I don't think there's going to be anything terribly difficult about it, given that some of these are like interior green. Those are FS colours. Those are standard colours. A lot of these are going to be pretty standard colours. Instructions themselves are, you know, relatively clear. They're sort of sort of three D drawings. They're not. Um, Flat, they're not shaded that much, other than um, where you have to paint bits in particular colors, maybe. But do you know what? They're not that bad. Um, it's it sometimes you know, you do look at instructions, think, wow, those are really cool looking instructions, and do they actually impart any more information? I'm not sure. Sometimes they do, sometimes they do, to be fair, sometimes they do, but other times they really don't. Uh, okay. Generally speaking, um, you know, there's not an awful lot to do to, bit to this kit, to be honest. I think most of the work in this kit is going to be making it look good rather than actually putting parts together properly. Just the one uh, paint scheme included here, paint and decal scheme, is uh, Gabby Gabreski's aircraft during his time at RAF Boxted in England. And there's also a map of the sprues as well, just in case. You need that for some reason. Here we go then. Now, I won't say it looks a terribly complex build per se. There's a lot of interesting detailing I can pull out using various techniques, which will be good. There's a figure to do, which is always fun. So um, maybe I'll do a separate video on that figure. And yeah, then there's going to be the build video of the kit itself. As I say, not going to be that difficult, but I think doing the, the scheme might be a bit more interesting. And let's see, we can do a little bit of weathering and stuff like that just to make it pop that bit more. So next video up will be the history of the P47 and indeed of the kit while the kits are available. 
of the Thunderbolt and then there will be the build video. How you know when these arrive? Well, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they crop up. And of course, please, anything you see on my channel that you like, please give it an imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again for more in this series and indeed other builds. Take very good care now. Goodbye. Thank you.